Welcome back. Now we will talk about interactions of electromagnetic spectrum with atmosphere. We know that uh, all the energy that comes from the sun has to pass through the atmosphere and there may be certain developments taking place in the atmosphere. The electromagnetic spectrum may be transmitted through the atmosphere. It may be absorbed by the particles and the molecules present in the atmosphere or it may be scattered by different means. Now scattering is an important phenomenon that takes place uh, in the atmosphere and uh, which means that uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is redirected from its original path. Now we have to understand how does this scattering take take place and what are the different kinds of scattering the first is the relay scattering when the particles or gaseous molecules are very small 10 to the power minus 4 lambda microns compared to the wavelength of the radiation that is in the visible spectrum 0 0.4 to 0 0.776 the scattering takes place means the particles are small but the wavelength is huge and this type of scattering is dominant in the upper atmosphere. Now, when it is dominant in the atmosphere, it causes scattering of shorter wavelengths than the, than the longer wavelengths. This is what gives blue color to the sky. So, relay scattering is responsible for giving blue color to the sky due to uh, scattering of the lower wavelengths in the higher atmosphere. The second is my scattering when the particles like smoke and blaze are just about the same size 0 0.1 to 10 micrometer as the wavelength of the radiation. The both are comparable in that case my scattering takes place and there is third type of scattering which is called as non-selective scattering when particles are much larger than uh, 10 microns and the, uh, than the wavelength of the radiation then this kind of scattering takes place. Now uh, we have another mechanism that is interaction of electromagnetic uh, radiations with earth's surface. When uh, the electromagnetic radiation is incident on any uh, part of the earth there may be uh, you know three uh, processes. One is the absorption. It may be absorbed. You can see here when absorption occurs when radiation is absorbed into the target. This is the target and it has absorbed this radiation. The second phenomenon that may take place is the transmission when the radiation passes through the target. This is uh, uh, falls on the target and it has let it uh, transmit to the other side. And the third mechanism is uh, reflection when radiation bounces off the target and is redirected. Now when incident energy falls on it, it redirects it back, it reflects it back in different directions. Now in which direction it's going to go, we will talk that in the next slide. And uh, before that we need to know how much of the energy is absorbed, transmits or reflected by the material. It will depend on the wavelength of the incident energy. What is the wavelength of the incident energy that is coming? And second, the material constituting the surface, what are the chemical constituents of that uh, surface, whether it is striking water and what, whether it is striking any hard surface, whether it is striking vegetation, that will also decide how the, uh, you know, uh, electromagnetic radiation is going to behave after it strikes the target. And also the third thing is condition of the feature, how the feature, uh, you know, uh, looks like is it rough is it smooth is it kind of wavy is it kind of you know uh, geometrically different shape so that also determines how it's going to behave now uh, how interaction of electromagnetic radiation uh, with earth surface uh, we want to know how it's going to behave reflect how the reflection is going to behave uh, reflection from surface occurs in two ways as we uh, uh, studied in the previous slide that it may go in any direction. So we want to know when the surface is smooth, we get a mirror, mirror like or smooth reflection when almost all of the incident energy is reflected in one direction. See like this here it is coming and the surface is smooth. It's giving a mirror like you know image and it gives rise, rise, rise to images. 
Now there is a diffuse reflection when the surface is rough surface has to be rough like just like the tree here for the specular reflection the example is road which is smooth here for the diffuse reflection the example is tree which is uh, which has a rough surface the energy is reflected uniformly in almost all directions and it doesn't give uh, you know rise to any image uh, the incident may come here and it may get reflected to this side it may get reflected to this side it may get reflected to this side this is how uh, the reflection takes place and uh, in different directions now how spectral vegetation interaction of vegetation and water takes place we need to know that wave wave if wavelengths are much smaller than the surface variation or the particle sizes that make up the surface diffuse reflection will dominate for example fine grained sand would appear fairly smooth to a long wavelength microwaves but when the same sand is uh, reflecting uh, would appear quite rough to the visible wavelengths because um, uh, the wavelength will be uh, lower at that uh, point of time. So, uh, you know, what is uh, the thing that is responsible for it? A chemical compound in leaves, you know it already, chlorophyll strongly absorbs radiation in the red and blue wavelengths. Now, why does it appear green? Why does uh, trees uh, or any other vegetation appear green? Because they have a chlorophyll which absorbs strongly in red and all the wavelengths of red and blue are absorbed by the chlorophyll whereas all the green wavelengths are reflected. Now when green wa wavelengths are reflected means the color that uh, we see uh, of the tree is or the vegetation is of green. Now we have water. Uh, longer wavelength uh, visible and near infrared radiation is absorbed more by water. Now, in case of water, why does it appear to be blue? Because longer wavelengths, which are visible and near infrared radiation, is absorbed more by water than the shorter wavelengths. This water typically looks blue or green due to stronger reflectance as these shorter wavelengths and darker if viewed at red or near infrared wavelength now uh, we uh, it's an important diagram uh, of spectral reflectance curve now uh, you know all earth is mainly composed of three components that is water vegetation and soil pear soil now the all the uh, you know this is the electromagnetic spectrum electromagnetic radiation spectrum uh, showing the wavelengths now we we want to know how does these three important components of the globe of the earth behave uh, with respect to the different kinds of wavelengths now all the incident energy all the wavelengths that are coming from the sun and fall on the earth's surface visible portion uh, in, in the visible you can for, for water you can see peak in the visible portion means if you want to analyze water in independence band 2 in the visible portion this one 2 in the visible portion will be uh, appropriate to analyze this now if we follow the curve of vegetation you can see it is it has a first peak is here and it is almost the peak area is this where it is uh, reflecting strongly and the region wavelength region where uh, it is reflecting strongly will be appropriate to study its characteristics so you can say near infrared near infrared up to intermediate infrared is the portion that will be looking for uh, those wavelength bands to study vegetation now for soil soil you can see it is increasing from here to here and you can see these are the peaks these are the peaks you will be looking for if you want to uh, individually study soil characteristics you have to look for these bands that fall in this in this wavelength in this wavelength region now uh, because uh, uh, you are uh, simultaneously become interested in what studying water vegetation and soil so you would uh, try to strike uh, a balance between all the three so uh, you can see here this band up till this uh, is the perfect area when you will be uh, getting you know some kind of reflectance in uh, water as well as vegetation as well as the soil so you will be looking for these bands having these uh, reflectance in these wavelengths to study about the characteristics of all of them uh, together 
Now uh, another term at is atmospheric windows. Uh, as we go by the definition, it says the portion of spectrum which doesn't get heavily influenced by atmospheric absorption and can be helpful for remote sensing sensors. You know the uh, all remote sensing depends on how good the uh, reflectance is. Uh, the, because if the reflectance is high, the se sensor on placed on the satellite will receive the signal. Uh, you know in a better uh, manner and uh, we will be able to get a good image now this is the portion where the image is absorbed heavily and this is the portion the white portion you can see visible part of visible area and a part of uh, photographic infrared and some uh, you know places in mid middle infrared these are the appropriate bands for remote sensing and are called as atmospheric windows because they provide a perfect window for the reflection and doesn't get heavily influenced by the absorption. So that's all about uh, the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with atmosphere and the surface. Thank you.